We all know of those mythical NBA players who go crazy out of nowhere and they make you wonder, if they played like this all the time, could they actually be stopped? Players like Hoodie Mello, Gangsign John Wall, Bubble TJ Warren and Untuck Kyrie are just some examples of this. There is one player however who does it more often than not. One player who straps on the backpack and goes crazy when playing for his country. His name? It's FIBA Paddy Mills. Now before I explain the mythical player known as FIBA Paddy, let me give you some background on NBA Paddy Mills because it is very important to distinguish that these are two different beasts. Regular Paddy Mills is a seasoned veteran in the NBA. He has won a ring on the Spurs and was a vital part to their dominant run in the early 2010s, coming up with some clutch plays and solidifying himself as a great role player in the NBA. But he has never been able to become a real star. He hasn't made an all-star team, he's never been all-NBA, and last season he came off the bench for the Nets, averaging 6 points a game. So, he isn't a real star, but rather a solid rotation player who is capable of getting a few buckets off the bench. FIBA Paddy Mills on the other hand is on a whole nother level. His career average points per game in the NBA is only 9, however FIBA Paddy is capable of dropping 35 points on any given night, and most recently he led Australia to the medal in the 2020 Tokyo Olympics and dropped 42 on a certain superstar, but more on that later. First we need to understand how FIBA Paddy became the beast he is, and it all started in 2007. In 2007, Mills made his senior national team debut at the FIBA Oceana Championship. He played well, averaging a solid 10.3 points per game. But this was only the beginning. Next up, FIBA Paddy played in the 2008 Olympic Games in Beijing and averaged a solid 14.2 points per game, scoring a team high 22 in a loss against Argentina and being a solid contributor while helping the Boomers get to the quarterfinals where they unfortunately ran into the ridiculous Redeem team and lost 116 to 85. I also just want to note that Paddy was only 20 during the 2008 Olympic Games, so he's very young, but already showing signs of what he could become. The next time the world was lucky enough to witness FIBA Paddy play was in 2010 for the FIBA World Championship, which is the equivalent of the FIFA World Cup, and we now call it the FIBA World Cup. Anyway, it's starting in just a few days, and if you want to know more about that, click this video for a full rundown of how the tournament works. Coming back to 2010, it was the FIBA World Championship, and Paddy averaged 13.8 points a game and 4.2 assists a game, helping Australia to finish in 10th place, which was their best finish in the tournament since 1998. Little did we know, FIBA Paddy would be bringing the Boomers back to the front of the world basketball scene. And if we skip forward two years to the 2012 London Olympics, the first real showing of FIBA Paddy happened. He went off. Mills started off the Olympics with a solid 18 points, but they unfortunately lost to Brazil. He then scored 11 against the eventual silver medalists in Spain. For the third game, FIBA Paddy put up 20 as the Boomers got their first ever win against China. His next game was his biggest though, as it was a real statement, dropping a whopping 39 on Great Britain at their home Olympics. The GOAT had 5 threes and went 60% from the field, smashing the Brits in their own house 106 to 75. How embarrassing. The GOAT then hit a ridiculous game winner against Russia, which you can see here. And then it was off to play the USA in a quarterfinal rematch from the previous Olympics. In this rematch, Mills scored the most of anyone on the floor, which included Kobe, LeBron, KD, Westbrook and so on. He scored 26 points, going 9 for 20. Unfortunately the Boomers were no match for the USA and he couldn't do it all on his own. So the Aussies were out, they couldn't win a medal again, Australia had to wait another 4 years before going for Olympic gold again, and the leader of the team, Andrew Bogart, was getting older. But things weren't as bad as they seemed. FIBA Paddy had just come to life. He actually ended up being the tournament's highest scoring player, averaging 21.2 a game, ahead of second place, someone who scored 19.5 a game, someone called Kevin Durant? Who the hell is that? All I know is my goat, Paddy Mills, was out in full force and ready to go. Continuing this dominance, Paddy steamrolled through the 2013 FIBA Oceana Championship, dropping a cool 20.5 points a game. But we are here for the main events, not some filler tournament with teams who aren't worthy of playing against the GOAT. So let's move on to the 2016 Olympic Games in Rio. These games put Paddy Mills back in the spotlight. He averaged a massive 21.3 points a game, which was good enough for second in scoring for the whole tournament. 
Fever Paddy was going crazy during these games, and he started it all off with a 21 point game in a win against the French. He then backed it up with 26 in an even bigger win against Serbia, but that wasn't even close to his best game, which was coming up next against the USA. The Boomers had to come face to face with the powerhouse that had knocked him out of the previous two Olympics, and guess what my goat did? He dropped 30. They unfortunately lost, but the world was reminded, in case they forgot, that Fever Paddy Mills is the real deal. After the USA, the Boomers had China, which was a blowout win, and Paddy only had to score 5 points before being rested. And then he was also rested in the next game against Venezuela, because one thing had happened. Australia had made it through to the quarterfinal. They were up against Lithuania, and guess who came to play? By this point, Paddy had officially taken over as the leader of the team and he led Australia well with 24 points. They won that game 90-64, making it the first time that Australia had made it to the quarterfinals since the 2000 Olympics, and the GOAT could practically feel the medal hanging around his neck by this point. They unfortunately had Serbia in the semi-final and weren't up to it, losing 61-87, to with Miller scoring a team-high 13. But the Boomers still had a chance at bronze, and Fever Paddy gave it everything in the bronze medal game against Spain, as you can see from these clips here. He was unstoppable, scoring 30 points in 11 from 23 shooting. However, it was overshadowed by a controversial call in the dying seconds of the game. One that Mills wishes he could take back forever. Let me know down in the comments, do you really think this was a foul? I know at the time a lot of people were saying there's no way that's a foul, but I'm an Aussie and I'm pretty biased, so let me know what you think. Anyway, let's move on before I start getting mad at the refs again. The next time FIBA Paddy would grace the world with his presence was in the 2019 FIBA World Cup. This 2019 FIBA World Cup was another dominant showing for Mills. In the first game against Canada, FIBA Paddy had a solid 15 points in the 108-92 smashing of Canada. The next game against Senegal, where the Boomers won 81-68, he had a team high of 22. Two days later, in the 5 point win over Lithuania, Paddy had a similar game, dropping a team high 23 and hitting a clutch 3. Then they were up against the Dominican Republic and Paddy showed out once more, with 19 points and 9 assists. So far, he was torching up the competition and the Boomers hadn't lost a game, but that was in jeopardy as they were coming up against France. But guess who stood up once more? Of course it was Fever Paddy. He came out clutch, with a massive steal that essentially won them the game. Oh, and by the way, he also had 30 points, going 10 for 18 from the field, but really that's no big deal for him. Then Australia casually strolled through the Czech Republic in the quarterfinals, where Paddy had 24 points and 6 assists. At this point, FIBA Paddy was unstoppable, having only scored less than 20 points one time. However, up next was another challenger in the semi-finals, Spain, a rematch from the bronze medal match in 2016. After this game, Australia were definitely in Spain without the S, as Paddy had just dropped 34 points, which was easily the most on his team, with the next highest scorer only scoring 16. Australia had lost in double overtime to the eventual champions, going 95-88, to but Paddy definitely did his job. He was out there looking like 2018 LeBron. After that loss, Australia was on for the third place game, where they would rematch France. This was also a bad game for the Boomers, as they were up by 10 points at half time, 5 at the end of the third quarter, and somehow we lost by 8 points, 67 to 59. Fever Paddy was decent, having 15 points and going 50% from the field, but the Aussies just didn't have it that day, and they looked like they'd run out of gas after the double OT game the day before. Paddy again was one of the highest scorers, averaging 22.8 points a game, which was good enough for equal third. So far, Fever Paddy was a genuine superstar and everyone around the world knew it. But he had one thing eluding him, a medal. He'd come so close, finishing fourth twice, but he had another chance to claim that coveted medal in the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games. In these games, Australia finally recognised the superstar they have in Fever Paddy and they let him carry the flag in the opening ceremony, a feat no Indigenous Australian has ever done. That was nice. But Fever Paddy was there for one thing, and one thing only. The first game was against Nigeria, and this game, to lightly put it, was domination. Paddy had 25 points and 6 assists, and the Boomers won 84-67. The next game against Italy, 
Fever Paddy put a masterclass on once again. 16 points, 6 rebounds and 5 assists in a 3 point win over the Italians. The game after that, domination! Australia beat Germany by 13 and Paddy had 24. This meant that Paddy had led the Boomers onto the final stages and the quarter final had Australia up against Argentina. As it was a final, the game was really tough for Paddy. He couldn't really get into any rhythm and he was having an off night. Psych! Domination! Australia won by almost 40 in the quarter final. Louis Scholar was still playing somehow and even though he was 300 years old at the time, he was still there. And guess what? Paddy put him into the retirement home. See you later, Grandpa. I probably should calm down because unfortunately, the world had seen enough of Paddy having his way with the Olympics. I'm getting really sick of you! Get out now! The semi-final was up and the Aussies had the USA again. This is actually getting ridiculous by now. Can they actually just get to a final once without having to play the USA? Like, what the actual f As you would expect, Australia lost. The final score was 97 to 78, and Paddy only had 15 points. But it really wasn't helped by the old man Joe Ingalls having a plus minus of negative 26. How on earth do you even get that many negatives? Let's move on, because clearly that wasn't my goat, FIBA Paddy's fault. Even though he only shot 35.7% from the field, it really wasn't his fault. Obviously it was Joe Ingles' fault or anyone else on the team, not him. Australia had one last chance to repay Paddy for all the hard work and backbreaking efforts he had put in carrying this Australian team. The bronze medal match. They were up against a new kid on the block in Luka Doncic, who had also been just going crazy these Olympics, averaging 24.2 points a game up until this point, along with 10 rebounds and 10 assists. So clearly, Paddy finally had a challenger. The game was really tense. The first quarter was only separated by one point. But that was it. Fever Paddy was here and he went off. Have a look at these highlights. Oh my God. Fever Paddy ended up with 42 points. Yes, that's right. 42 points in a bronze medal game against arguably the best player in the competition at the time. Besides, of course, the GOAT Paddy Mills. Are you serious? Paddy went off and won his first ever medal, the Rose Gold. Yes, the Rose Gold. For anyone saying it's a bronze, you suck. The Rose Gold medal was the final thing that Paddy Neal's needed. He had done it all. He was the best Australian basketball performer ever, flag bearer, backpack carrier, and now a Rose Gold medalist. FIBA Paddy was established. But uh, it's time to bring an Olympic medal home back to our country, Australia, so I can hang it up at mum and dad's house. This is rose gold, actually. And for all you losers saying he can't be the GOAT because he hasn't actually won a real gold medal, I want to say to you, he's going to do that at this upcoming FIBA World Cup, which is happening in just a few days. He will be there showing out. I've got no doubts about it. Lastly, if you love FIBA Paddy as much as I do, please drop a like. FIBA Paddy would. If you want to know how Shelly is actually going to do in the World Cup, click on the video here. And if you don't know what the FIBA World Cup is actually all about and you need to know, click on the video here. And lastly, if you want me to keep making videos like this, please subscribe with this button here. Thank you all so much for watching. I love you all. Go FIBA Paddy. Go the Boomers. Go Australia.